Hello dear viewers and welcome back to another installment of this uh, strange and random um, tech uh, channel that I'm doing on YouTube. I don't really know where I'm going with this but anyway I'm a tech hoarder. I got an affinity for uh, shiny old things, uh, well-built flagships of days past, PDAs, metal cameras, all sorts of tech uh, random memorabilia if you will and today I'm looking at the iPad voice messenger and I don't really know what this thing is other than general basic facts so let's find out together uh, this uh, strange looking phone was built in 2008 was launched in 2008 um, and it's a Windows Mobile 6.1 device. It's built by HP and uh, well it was sort of supposed to take the smartphone, the traditional smartphone recipe further. You see back then smartphones still had keyboards, most of them had switched to QWERTY uh, uh, layouts but there were still some that used the uh, a rather uh, traditional design. This one tries to combine both uh, standard uh, 12 keys with the QWERTY design. So each button, each key is supposed to represent two symbols like this one. Uh, the first key has Q and W assigned to it. So I don't know how this works. Hmm. This is rather embarrassing because I don't know how to operate this thing. So, okay, don't judge me too harshly. I know what this thing is. I have been not dreaming but salivating over it for quite some time. Way back when it was launched, obviously, not in its current... Uh, not in the current um, tech climate because right now I could afford it easily I just found it difficult to buy one on the cheap that is also well maintained so I can review it I bought this actually with about 10 to 12 euros something like that um, and it's in a pretty good shape aesthetically and technically so it it's not broken it doesn't have a lot of scratches it does have some scratches but not a whole lot I find it interesting that it has this rather shiny back plate which is supposed to mimic metal but it's actually cheap plastic so every bit of its construction is premium feeling except for this back part which adheres rather well but it's too flimsy to stay put so if you hear this yeah it's it's not quality inspiring at all but again you can't really say too much bad things about these things because they're old right so nobody cares uh, suffice it to say you wouldn't uh, accept this level of quality today although it's a strange mix of cheap materials and excellent built quality so the gaps are narrow small con uh, they're consistent with one another nothing creaks too much but the materials are just all over the place so um, no touch screen obviously um, these buttons though on the top these two are their capacitive so when you touch them you don't need to press them just uh, um, run your fingers over them I don't know if that makes sense I'm and yeah this is the device it's running a Qualcomm MSM 721A chipset let me just put the back cover it's got a 528 megahertz uh, 
ARM11 CPU and an Adreno 130 GPU, so a dedicated video um, um, card thingy. Um, the camera is a 3.15, so basically a 3.2 megapixel unit with autofocus and an LED flash. Yeah, I, I think I get what this uh, black backplate is all about. So it was supposed to mirror your whole image so you can take your selfies with it. It has a dedicated camera button on the side so you could take photos like with a point and shoot camera. A whole bunch of buttons here, a rocker switch for the volume and what does this thing do let's see yeah voice commander no i don't want to command anything to this phone so let me just quickly exit and this there's another phone ah this button unlocks unlo and unlocks the phone let's see if it works i think you need to hold it yeah now you need to hold hold it for about two or three seconds to lock or unlock so let me just keep it locked and there's another button here which mutes the phone and sets it to vibrate. Yeah, that's that's a pretty nice feature actually. I miss that in modern phones. I know of Apple I think still offers it in their devices, but I'm not an Apple user, so there. I don't get that. There are some LEDs on the front and while well, I like the HP logo, it's very, I don't know, professional looking if not all the way professional. But you know what? I can't really find out. Ah, yeah, here. I thought there was no jack for the, for, there was no headphone jack, but it's placed here on the side and also a micro USB port so yeah 2009 this thing had a micro USB which was pretty novel back then it's got Wi-Fi capability and Bluetooth 2.0 so yeah pretty good kind of connectivity options there's GPS also and well the browser WAP 2.0 HTML whatever that is I don't know because Pre-Android era, I didn't really use mobile internet, so don't ask me stuff about that. It's got pocket office, media player, and predictive text input. Those were features back then, don't laugh. Except for the first one, they're just basic stuff right now, but pocket office, that's pretty big even today, because you don't get it standard. You can install it on your Android, but you might not get it to run or at least you weren't able you wouldn't be able to modify your documents that easily without paying a license nevertheless even if you did get pocket office on this thing i don't really see how you could use it with this low screen it's got a 2.4 inch uh, QVGA resolution in a 4.3x aspect ratio, so 240 by 320 pixel, with a 100, 167 ppi density, so pixel per inch, which is pretty low even by that day standards, which was pretty low. 107 grams. It feels pretty light and inconsistent in the hand almost flimsy if you start to force it. it doesn't really bend that much so it's excellent build quality but low quality in the material department it's what i mean to say it's very well put together but with low costing plastic uh, painted surfaces which are uh, worst of both worlds so at least with glass and metal you get that premium feel but you get the fingerprint magnet effect as a downside uh, with plastic phones you get better resistance to fingerprints and smudges but a lower quality material feel for this one you get the smudges and the lower quality plastic so yeah it's a no-go for me but anyway, it's a strange looking device. 
Speaking about the design, I don't know. I see it like this rounded up uh, shape here reminds me of a cuckoo clock or something strange and quirky from the past. I don't really see it applied to, to applying it to today's smartphones. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's just that this is the first thought that pops into my mind when analyzing the looks of this phone. So yeah, a strange looking thingy from way back then. I don't know what it cost, but it's supposed to cost about 80 euros at least in its latest um, price offering, which would be around 2012 to 2014 when this device stopped being relevant. After the smartphone revolution, these things went the way of the dodo bird. And there's not really too much mystery about why that happened. But anyway, this is the HP iPack voice messenger. Quite a strange looking beast. It's nice to have around in the drawer to toss it around and reminisce about what phones used to mean back then in the 20 teens. So stick around and help my channel grow and when I get to 1000 subscribers I pledge to give this thing away for free and to, I don't know, maybe some other HP aficionado can hold on to it, analyze it, play with it for a couple of weeks and pass it on or maybe just keep it in, its, in his wacky collection. So thanks for watching and stick around for my next installments. Bye bye.